Lucy had. My real name's Mariah Hawkins. They say I look like I come from the dead, because I'm scrawny and I'm bony and hollow-eyed. No, I ain't got no mirrors to see myself. I knows I'm real and been living longer in time. Yes, I knows it. A cause of a memory of things way back here. <laughs> I tends the lighthouse here. Oh, must have wrecked a hundred ships up to now by making mistakes with my signals. Oh, delightful. Yes, cause I can hear them screaming and wailing when they crack up and go down. Oh, you hear that? It's old Mephisto. He's the crow. Keeps me company here. I calls him Mephisto, cause he's the devil of a bird. <laughs> There's old Jenny Boggs, the ghost of a dead seaman's wife. She's been haunting my upstairs landing. Ahoy there, Jenny! Gets over to the mainland about once a month to get my victuals. The people there all runs away from me like they was afeard. I wouldn't hurt him. I only get violent in my storytelling. I fears my stories, and then I lose control, and I go almost mad. <laughs> mad, 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 insane. I got one coming on now, so make it dark, dark, dark as pitch. <laughs> That's right. Now feel my bony fingers running up and down your spines and behind your ears whilst you're a sitting there in the blackness. <laughs> Hear that whistle out there? That's the terror train, the old spook limited. Tonight it's right on schedule, yes. When the vampires and the specters come out of the graves to haunt you, that wicked old rattler comes a gushing and a churning down across the midnight sky, right out of the storm clouds. It's a heading down your way now. A spitting and a crackling orange and blue flames out of its inky black sides. Its monster red headlight is licking like fire out over the rooftops and into the windows, flashing on the faces. It's looking for a station, a place to stop and pick up the bodies for the next world. Yes. <laughs> you can't get away from it. Feel the throb and the tremble of the big demon locomotive, a churning and a whirring right down towards you. Mm, a dragging its ghastly train of pitch black coffin cars over the eerie trestles and moonless crossings that span the dark skies. <laughs> Hear its clammy bell a clanging and a going out there in the night. Taste the sweet smoke of Satan as it gushes out in the funnel, trailing over the spirit cars, out o'er the icy caboose, and into the dismal wind. Oh, there's nothing you can do about it. Ah! <laughs> nothing, nothing. No place to run. No place to hide. It's getting closer closer all the time. Yes, you can see it now a winding and a twisting and a roaring on to the ghostly viaduct that crosses o'er the devil's ravine yonder. Some of the phantom trainmen are working at their ghastly duties. Old 
Robbins, the engineer, he's a leaning into the wind of his cab. His skull-like face grinning out like a specter, and his eyes burning red coals, staring out of the deep black sockets. Oh, he's pressing down on the throttle, building up speed, driving the horrible black monster faster, 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 out of the inky night. His long, bony hands hard down on the train whistle cord. Yes. Oh, listen, listen to the wails and cries of the night demons. He's driving the terror train over. Yes, next to old ovens, it's Mad Grogan, the clanking fireman. He's a shoveling and a sweating like bloody murder. Feeding the hungry inferno of spirit fires in the engine with big shovels full of old skulls and dry bones. He shovels faster and faster and faster and faster. <laughs> Feeding up all of the licking flames in the engine. Spirit sweat dripping down his slippery face all the time. Yes, <laughs> and sad jibes the dreary brakeman. He's been dead for 400 and some odd years now. He was hanged. Oh, how delightful he is. Hanged. Oh, see him juice up the wheels of the coffin cars by squirting them with ghost blood. Oh, ghost blood he is. Oh, over there is Webley, the wild grieving porter. He floats slow and easy down through the train, making up the coffins in the grave compartments. <laughs> oh, look at his wicked face. Grieving all the time. He's sad because he's got to whip all the ghosts and specters that are riding on the train. <laughs> whip him with lashes of fire. And that's not all. Webley's the one that puts you aboard and beds you down when the train reaches you. And it's, <laughs> it's coming in fast. It's coming in fast. Hang on to each other now. Tight, tight. It's almost here. It's coming at you. Coming at you right now. Hold on tight. It's stopping for you now. I'm watching you all close up through my telescope. I can see you there straining and awaiting for my next terror tale. This is the big warning. If you ain't heard about him yet, watch out. The ghost mice is coming. Yes, they're coming. The ghost mice from outer space. <laughs> oh, yes, about a thousand years ago, the red demon farmed through the fire ghosts on the flaming planet Thorm. In the far heavens was overrun with the venomous little beasties. They come up out of the bowels of the Thorm. Millions of them clawing and gnawing and are scampering up out of the caverns and the craters. They started to eat. They ate everything in sight, yes. They ate the scrumpets and the squilligens or the fire ghosts. And they ate up all the diffy brogs and quine flames. They roost amidst the tall molt on the banks of the Putland Gloosh. They even ate their way into the ashy glom, where the plague gnomes abide. Hey, yes, oh, and nothing stopped them, nothing. And nothing could fill them up or satisfy their hunger, cause everything they ate turned into nothing. Oh, 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 terrible. Then one day, old Morblog, the high priest of the flame trolls, and his presidium of waving green canatoles, held a meeting and decided to send the bitter plague of mice down to eat us mortals off the earth. Uh, yes, they lured all the growing herds of ghost mice into big glittering space wagons and blasted them. Spinning out into space, woman down toward the earth, 
and they've been blasting them off at us for over a thousand years. And this morning, the very first of them horrible glittery space wagons come a whistling down like a shed caught in the gusty fist of a cyclone. Thrashed open on the face of the field where a farmer was a plowing and spewed its nasty cargo all squealing and squeaking out all the land. It was delightful. <laughs> yes, yes, exciting. Because oh, the first thing they did was to eat the farmer. Yeah, oh, they ate the farmer. Yes, they ran at him and <laughs> ate him up. <laughs> oh, 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 yes, they ate him up vicious like and left him a standing there, tooth clean, a skeleton in rags. <laughs> then they ate his mules tied there into the plow, and they foraged on, eating up every little thing as they went, leaving nothing anywhere but quick piles of bones. Oh, oh, oh bones, yes. Look, an endless line of the wicked space wagons is a coming in fast now. I can spot them through my telescope. Listen, there's one a-landing out there. Hear it? There's another. Closer this time. And there's another. Out by the village, they're crashing in everywhere. Swooping down into the cities. Plowing into the towns and hamlets. Belching out great waves of the ghosts everywhere. Nasty little things. Soft, squidgy, like little bags of mush with sharp, saw teeth in their long snoots. Oh, yes, yes. You can hear them. They're everywhere about you. They're ignoring into your kitchens. Right now, they're coming out of your record players, scampering all over your living rooms. Yes, jump into your airplanes, start up your hell and get into a submarine. Oh, 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 oh,
I watched him through my long glass. I seen him for real, a sliding and a oozing through the village yonder. He oozed a slithering up the side of a house in the village. Yes, like a monster's horrible hand, all blue, black, and slimy. Yes, his long searching fingers and bloated jelly body slimed out of sight down the chimney. <laughs> Oh, I heard the screams and the screeches of the people who was attacking down in the house. Yes, I heard him loud and wild. <laughs> oh, it was wonderful, bad, delightful, horrifying. Yes, yes, whilst Devil Octopus was a slithering back up the chimney to the roof. Word got around, and the whole village become a feared and panic upset. Like they was crazy, and whilst people was a running and a trampling on each other to get away, old devil octopus went a wreathing and a oozing through the alleys, across the town cemetery, and into the sea, leaving naught but a path of slimy poison where he'd been. Oh, <laughs> Oh, ho, ho, ho. now when the night drizzle started down, he's out again. He's a slimin' and a slopping fast back o'er the fields toward the village. His snaky black tentacles all a weaving and a squirming. His horrible big head and monstrous fat body squidges slimy up and down as he moves. Oh, ho, ho. yes, he can't be stopped. Cause he smells the human blood. Oh, yes. Oh. <laughs> he pops up without warning. He moves fast, lightning fast. He's out there now, a thinking up his wicked plans. He'll hew a ghastly path right up to your door. He'll tear you to pieces if any catches you. So nail up your windows tight. Lock up your doors. Stuff up your fireplaces, cause he comes in a slithering like the wind. There, there he is, a busting in your door. Oh, 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 listen, listen to me. If you want to be saved, all you men, grab an axe. Keep chopping at him hard, harder, harder. Oh, oh. Enchanting! Ah! <laughs> I'm completely satisfied. I'm terrible out of sorts tonight. God, it's too quiet. You see, I thrives on excitement, and I can't stand it when there ain't none. I'm a sitting out here on a big rock fishing. <laughs> well, good catch, though. Oh, but I'm too generous. Each one I gets, I throws it out there to prove it. He's my pet whale. Been a hanging around all week, and he's starved. I knows when he's up to something, like a shipwreck, maybe. Oh, oh, oh. oh I look through my telescope. Aha! There's a ship rising out of the fog. Yes, it's the Silver Queen. Oh, and she a beautiful thing, delightful, trim and steady. Her graceful bows are dipping slow curtsies to the great ground swells that heave drunkenly toward her out of the night. Yes, oh, look at the slender curve of her stern, like the stylish bustle of a beautiful lady sauntering snobbishly down a misty boulevard. Oh, <laughs> Ah, 
car is a lot of laughter and gay joking going on as the carefree passengers dance to the lilt and strain of the ship's orchestra. Yes, yes, whilst the graceful craft knifes easy through the fog, a monster shape comes rising up out of the deep, taking form off the starboard bow. Oh, a hundred and ninety long tons of blubber sinew and muscle. His little pig eyes glitter like stars, and his flashes stop on the surface, pacing the ship quiet and effortless, like a gliding submarine stalking a convoy. Yes, a mighty snorting locomotive over the deep. That's right, Trivet. Wait a bit whilst the craft gets into the proper position. Yes, wait until you can hit it direct to midships. He's moving in now. Faster, faster. Going into a ram. Goody, 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 there he goes. Look, he cracked her right down the middle like a Christmas walnut, opening up a great gap in her side. Oh, thar sparks the radio man, sounding out a frantic SOS on the wireless in the radio room. He's wild with panic. Yes, panic is broke loose among the passengers, and they're a jumping overboard. Hear the screams of the women and children as the sailors try to launch the lifeboats. She's listening so bad. Now that they can't get him off, they're friends. Oh, ho, 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 ho. yes, the ship is sinking. <laughs> sinking. Joining all the clammy crew in Davy Jones' ghastly locker. Screaming and a floundering passengers dotting up the sea everywhere. Troopers amused, taking it all in, calm as a good one. Don't get any of them passengers caught in your teeth, Trubert. <laughs> Look, Trubert, there's fat Mrs. Honeycutt, a gasping and a puffing in the dark. She's got a big truck with a mighty jewel. She says that all the ship went down. Oh, she'll make a luscious tidbit to gum on whilst you're looking for more. <laughs> And there's the ship's cook, swimming like lady. Oh, let him go. He cooks good victuals. <laughs> and there's a thin, scrawny fella. You can eat him for bones to chew on. <laughs> there's the fish now. Dive in quick, Trubert. They got their guns on you. <laughs> But Trubert will be back. He's too smart for them. <laughs> yes. Oh, I guess I'd better go in before it's getting cold and clammy out here. Yes, 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 yes I know, Mephisto. I got to go upstairs to tend my light, I know. Oh, it was an exciting time after all. I feel fine now. Oh. You know, I heard a lot about them Coast Guards. I guess they knows what they're doing, but give me the old-fashioned way. Drive a harpoon deep down into the whale. <laughs> oh, but I shouldn't talk that way about poor Trubin, cause I'd miss him if and he was killed. Oh, we've had a whale of a time together. <laughs> yes, if you're afraid of the dark, fire up your hurricane lamps and put your blue glasses on, and you can't tell the difference. <laughs> this here tale's about a giant wasp-like creature that sucks on human blood to keep alive. <laughs> I calls it the spooky whirr, and it's delightful terrifying. A real vampire of a yarn. <laughs> Once upon a midnight, over a hundred years ago, a haunted scientist created a critter out of a small stinging beastie that he found a buzzing about in the forest. 
Yes, he suckled it on the true juice of the devil's weed and on flagons of human blood he got from the bodies of the new dead he bought from the ghouls in the neighborhood. <laughs> he fed it up good and he fed it up huge and he kept on feeding it more and more juice and more and more blood. The fur growed and thrived on its nasty repast till it was thrice the size of a bustin' fat pig. Oh, how pretty. <laughs> it growed a scaly green armor on its bulging, blimp long body so it couldn't be killed. Oh, <laughs> its long, vicious needle, a jutting out sharp and keen from betwixt the poppin' red eyes in his cannonball head, kept a suckin' and a slurpin' in the blood till there weren't no more. <laughs> and when he couldn't find none, he became raging frantic. <laughs> and in the night, whilst the scientist was asleeping, the word drove his terrible needle swift into the heart of his benefactor and pierced him dead. <laughs> oh, delicious. All full up with blood and monster mad, he splinter smashed out of the side of the house. A buzzing and a humming like a huge demon hornet, he swooshed away into the forest and built himself a nest amidst the tall trees. <laughs> It is from this horrible nest that he marauds out every night, a seeking to quench his thirst on the blood of humans that can't get away. <laughs> oh, believe me now, for true, I've seen it honest through my long glass. All the ground under his horrid lair is covered with the bones and the awful drained out bodies of his victims. But his greedy thirst can't never be satisfied. He's always out of looking for new blood. <laughs> yes, he hides in the eaves of the old buildings. He hides wherever it's dark, and he waits for new prey. <laughs> and whenever a human comes nigh, the dreadful whirr swoops down upon him, clutches him up in his great curved talons, and plunges his needle deep in to him and stings him senseless. <laughs> oh, wonderful. Then he whooshes away with him to his dismal nest and he stacks him up rigid with the others he stung and brought there. He stacks him all up live and stiff like cordwood and he drinks from him. <laughs> and he gets thirstier and thirstier and he won't never stop. Oh, it's terrible, terrible. Uh, what's that noise? What is it? It's him. I can see him plain. He's right outside my window. He's trying to break into my lighthouse. He's a knocking and a whacking on my storm door. He wants my blood, and I ain't got none to spare. <laughs> oh, 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 yes, he's in. The war's got in. He crashed in, in through my window. Oh, 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 oh my pistol, my oh, pistol. Get oh, him, pluck his eyes out. Oh, make him oh, blind. Go on, my oh, pistol. Oh, good, good, oh, my pistol. Good, oh, you got him. Oh, 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 He got away, oh. and he's flying toward oh. the shore. Oh, oh I, I must go aloft fast and ring my bell. I got to warn everyone on the mainland. The, oh, oh, the stairs gets me out of breath every time I have to go up especially fast. Oh, it just takes all the wind. Oh, oh dear. Oh, faster, faster. Oh, goodness. Oh, I must get up there. Oh, I must get there. Oh, oh, here's the bell. And here's the cord. Now I'll swing it hard. Uh, 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 I guess I better 
climbed the knots under heavy rope to make it ring bigger and louder. I'm, I'm just, oh dear, oh dear. I'm getting twisted up in the rope and tangled in it. I'm caught, I'm caught. Help, help, Mephisto, go get help. You stupid bird, it's all your fault. I'm ashamed of myself hanging out here in the midair. Oh, the war will get me, I'm sure. Oh, oh no! This here's a tale of jealousy, and what happens when the little green-eyed monster starts to gnaw at your innards? Yes, I calls it slumber nice. <laughs> I'm taking you to a plantation on a private island in the West Indies. <laughs> oh, there's the beach with the long white sands just ahead of you. The tall palms are swaying and a-waving to welcome us across the blue evening. <laughs> yes, listen to the natives over there in the little village. They're all relaxing from their day's work in the cane fields. <laughs> oh, there ain't nothing to disturb you here. Not one thing, except in Manuel, the giant zombie of Devil's Cove. <laughs> <laughs> yes, look, see the big house over there in the midst of the plantation garden? A party is just coming to a close. Yes, they've been celebrating the engagement of the landowner's beautiful daughter, Matilda, to young Jason Barnes, the handsome overseer of the plantation. <laughs> oh, everyone were happy. Everyone, except in Madame Tulip. Oh, yes, Madam Tulip, the beautiful native companion to Matilda, yes. Oh, she weren't taking it so good, cause she wants Jason for herself. <laughs> oh, she ain't as happy over the coming wedding as she's been making out. And thar, thar's Madam Tulip now, a-going into a room on the far side of the manor. Oh, her pretty face is set hard. She's got a plan, a plan to stop the wedding between Matilda and Jason. A deadly plan, oh, a real deadly plan. Look at her. She's luring the giant zombie Manuel. She's going into a voodoo trance as she moans into the wind. <laughs> Listen to her now. She sleeps, Manuel, in an upstairs room. She must not wake. Her bed's her tomb. The wailing wind softly with blood and death, Matilda sleeps. Strike now, man. It is my will. <laughs> oh, <laughs> yes, Madame Tulip Chanton got across to Big Manuel in his cave out there. And he come in like she knowed he would. <laughs> He's coming into the garden now. His monster big footsteps a slashing and a pounding slow and heavy through the flowers and the shrubs. He's staring straight ahead out of his green glittering eyes. He's crushing a path heavy toward the stairway to Matilda's room. Yes, <laughs> yes, sweet Matilda, innocent Matilda. 
Oh, look at how she's lying there. Yes, beautiful, beautiful, doomed young thing. <laughs> Listen to her easy breathing. <laughs> she don't know what's before her. She don't know manowers are coming. <laughs> yes, a kittenish wind claws and nibbles at the lacy curtains on the French doors. Slumber nice, Matilda. Dream easy, my darling, cause it might be your last chance. <laughs> <laughs> Manuel's coming up the stair, his feet are slapping cold and solid on each step. There he is on the balcony, now. You can see his huge shadow blocking out the moonlight. Look at him! His starving, thick mouth is slavering purple with a desire for blood. Oh, oh, oh how delightful! <laughs> yes, <clears throat> he's walking slow over to the bed, his mammoth hairy hands dangling long and loose out of the torn sleeves of his filthy shirt. Yes, <laughs> yes, oh, he's a color. He's a staring and a gasping down. Matilda's moving in her sleep. She's waking up. Manuel's big hands reach out toward her. <laughs> <laughs> oh, now don't worry, cause Jason come in just in time to shoot the zombie and save his beloved. Oh, young love is so delightful. Ooh, oh, oh, oh. And are you wondering about Madame Tulip? Well, they took her out to a special made guillotine and chopped off her head. <laughs> it rolled into the bucket, and I picked it up and put it in my apron and ran off with it. <laughs> Would you like to see it? Oh, yes, I forgot. I gave it to poor, lonely Jenny Boggs to play with. <laughs> Ha 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 ha!